Dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to study the morphology of the permanent maxillary first molar. So what we are going to study in this session, we are going to study the chronology or the timeline of development of maxillary permanent first molar. We are going to study the number of this tooth in various tooth numbering systems. And we will study the landmarks that are present on the maxillary permanent first molar. So watch this lecture till the end. So the timeline or the chronology of development of this tooth. So the calcification of this tooth, it begins at birth. The completion of enamel is around the age of three to four years. And the tooth it emerge into the oral cavity when the child is, is six to seven years old. If you add simply plus two, then the age is nine years. So the root is completed by the age of nine to ten years. Now let's discuss the number of this tooth in various tooth notation system. So this is a central incisor, lateral, canine, first premolar, second premolar, and the first maxillary permanent molar. So the number starts from here, one, two, three. So for the right maxillary first first molar, the number is, is three in the universal numbering system. Whereas for the left maxillary first first molar, the number is 14. So in the Palmer notation system, the number of this tooth is first maxillary molar, permanent molar is six. And same is for the left side. The only difference is this shape. This indicate that it is a maxillary tooth of the left side. And this shape, it indicate it is a maxillary tooth of the right quadrant. Now in the FDI notation system, for the right maxillary first molar, the number is 1, 6, not 16. And for the left maxillary first molar, the number is 2, 6. Here, the 1, it indicates the right maxillary right quadrant. And the 6, it indicates the tooth number. Same is on the left side. The 2 indicate it is the left quadrant left maxillary quadrant, while the six indicate that this is the first molar. Let's discuss the general features of the maxillary permanent first molar. The premolars and the molars, they have a common function, which is the mastication or grinding of food into smaller particles. This tooth, it is the largest tooth in the maxillary arch. The maxillary first molar, it has four large cusps, as you can see in this picture, and a one small supplementary cusp. And this cusp is known as the cusp of caribelli. This tooth has three roots. The maxillary permanent first molar, it has three well-separated roots, as you can see in this picture. Now, let's discuss the features of this tooth from the buccal aspect. Now, the part of four cusp are visible from the buccal aspect. Now, this is a picture of the maxillary permanent first molar, and four cusp, they are visible. This cusp is the mesiobuccal cusp. So this is the mesial side and this is the distal side. So this is the maxillary first molar of the right side. So four cusps are visible. So this cusp is known as the mesiobuccal cusp. This cusp is the distobuccal cusp. This cusp in the background, this is the mesiolingual cusp. And this smaller cusp on in the background is the distolingual cusp. So four cusps 
they are visible from the buccal aspect in this in the maxillary permanent first molar this cusp is known as the mesiobuccal cusp so this cusp is broader as compared to the adjacent cusp which is the distobuccal cusp now if you see these two cusps mesiobuccal and the distobuccal cusp so in between these two cusps there is a developmental groove and this developmental groove it divides the cusp it divides the tooth into two cusp so this is the buccal developmental groove now, this is the cervical line, also known as cemento enamel junction. So, the cervical line, it, do not, it does not have much curvature. If you recall, the curvature of the cervical line on the premolars or the tooth or the teeth that are present anterior to the premolars. So, as compared to those teeth, the cervical line doesn't have much curvature. Some more features from the buccal aspect. So all three roots, they are visible from the buccal aspect. So three roots, all this, this tooth has three roots and all three roots, they are visible from the buccal aspect. This is the mesial side of the tooth. This is the distal side of the tooth. So this root, it is known as the, is the mesiobuccal root. This second root is the distobuccal root. And the root that is in the background, this root is known as the palatal root and also referred as the lingual root as well. Three roots, mesiobuccal, distrobuccal, and the palatal root. All these three roots, they emerge from a common base. So this is a common base of common base from which these three roots, they emerge. So this common root base is known as the root trunk so the axis the roots they are inclined slightly in a distal direction so you can see the curvature of the root here so roots are they are slightly curved in a distal direction so you can see over here they curve slightly in a in a distal direction from the lingual side there are two major cusps among them the mesial lingual cusp is the larger one. So this cusp is the mesial lingual cusp. So this cusp is larger as compared to the distolingual cusp. So this second cusp is the distolingual cusp and this cusp it is a smaller and it is much rounded as compared to the mesial lingual cusp. In between the mesiolingual and the distolingual cusp, there is a developmental groove, also known as the lingual developmental groove. So this is the lingual developmental groove. If you see over here, just closely associated with the mesiolingual, the mesiolingual cusp, there's a small cusp over here as well. And this cusp is known as the fifth cusp or a cusp of caribelli. So this fifth cusp or the cusp of caribelli, it is as closely associated with the mesiolingual cusp. Now from the mesial aspect, this increase in buccolingual dimension. So this is the buccal side and this is the lingual side. So there is increase in the buccolingual dimensions if you compare it with the teeth that are present anterior to it like the second premolar or the first premolar so the occlusal table or the buccolingual dimensions it increases from premolar to molars now three cusps they are visible this cusp this is the mesiobuccal cusp this cusp is the mesiolingual cusp and this small cusp is the fifth cusp also known as the cusp of caribelli. So three cusps they are visible from the mesial aspect. Now if you look at the roots 
only two routes out of three, only two routes are visible. This is the mesiobuccal route and this is the palatal route, which is the largest among the three routes. So this is the mesial marginal ridge and this mesial marginal ridge, it integrates with the ridges of the buccal, mesiobuccal and the mesiolingual cusps, cuspal ridges. The cervical line is irregular, but it has a very slight curvature, uh, and this curvature is towards the occlusal surface. Now, if you look at the, at the tooth from the distal aspect, then the crown, it tapers towards the distal side. So, this is the distal aspect of the maxillary permanent first molar, and if you look at the distal aspect, this is the buccal side, and this is the lingual side. So the buccolingual width, it is less on the distal side because of the crown, uh, taper of the crown. And because of that, you can see part of the buccal side from the distal aspect. The distal marginal ridge, it dips sh sharply towards the cervical, in a cervical direction. So the, mes the distal marginal ridge, it is present at a lower level as compared to the mesial marginal ridge. Therefore, you can see the part of the occlusal surface from the distal aspect. If you look at the cervical line or the cemento enamel junction, then the cervical line or the cemento enamel junction, it is nearly straight on the distal side. Now, if you look at the roots from the distal aspect, then in the maxillary permanent first molar, you can see all three roots from the distal aspect because the distobuccal root is narrow. Because the distobuccal root is narrow, you can see part of the mesiobuccal root as well. So this is the mesiobuccal root, this is the distobuccal root, and this is the palatal root. From the occlusal aspect, the tooth is wider on the mesial side than the distal side. So this is the mesial side. This is the distal side. If you see the buccolingual bit, then it is more on the mesial side as compared to the distal side. So the tooth it is wider on the mesial side as compared to the distal side. Now let's compare the buccal from the lingual side. So this is the buccal side of the tooth. And this is the lingual side of the tooth. So the mesiodistal dimension on the lingual side, it is more as compared to the, to the buccal side. So the tooth it is wider lingually than buccal uh, than buccally. So four cusps, the all four major cusps are visible. So this is the mesiolingual cusp, which is the largest one. This is the mesiobuccal cusp. This is the distolingual cusp, and this cusp is the distobuccal cusp. This small cusp is known as the fifth cusp or the cusp of caribelli. Now, there are several fossae on the occlusal surface out of which there are two major fossae and the two minor fossae. So this fossa is the, among the major fossa, this fossa is the central fossa. In this area, there's a depression and we call it as, as central fossa. So this whole area, there's a depression. Now, just next to this oblique ridge, in this area, there's another depression and we call this depressed area as the distal fossa. So these two fossa are the major fossa, the, the central fossa and the distal fossa. Now there are two minor fossa, the one that is just adjacent to the mesial marginal ridge, this area is the 
mesial triangular fossa and another depression this is the distal triangular fossa bleak ridge it crosses the occlusal surface and it's formed by two cuspal ridges so this cuspal ridge is it arises from the from the mesial lingual cusp so this cuspal ridge and there's another cuspal ridge that arises from the distobuccal cusp so these two cuspal ridges they form an oblique ridge distobuccal cusp and the mesial lingual cusp these two cuspal ridges they form an oblique ridge on the occlusal surface that is one of the distinguishing feature of this tooth so same the union of the triangular ridges of the distobuccal cusp and the mesiolingual cusp it forms an oblique ridge which crosses the occlusal surface there are several developmental groove if you see the occlusal surface of the, this tooth but out of those developmental groove one of the prominent is the buccal developmental groove that arises from the central fossa and it divides it passes between the two buccal cusps this gr groove is the central developmental groove and there's another groove and this groove is the lingual developmental groove that divides the mesial lingual and the distal lingual cusps so this is a brief description of the maxillary permanent first molar uh, thank you very much for watching this video if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments and do please do give us your feedback so we can improve further thank you very much again for watching and stay blessed